H.P. Lovecraft has been the brains behind creating some evergreen horror characters, out of which Cthulhu is one of the most iconic creations. Cthulhu is a mysterious godlike creature whose origins and abilities extend beyond the scope of human understanding, and there are various mysteries surrounding his creation. He first appeared in Lovecraft's short story titled The Call of Cthulhu, wherein this entity rose from the ocean and soon became an extremely popular character in pop culture history, to the point where he was even included in video games and TV series even today. Let us explore his unique physiology and powers and look at the inner workings of Cthulhu's body. But before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. A Brief Origin Story of Cthulhu Cthulhu was the primary villain of the Cthulhu mythos story created by H.P. Lovecraft in 1928, and he was introduced as one of the deities known as the Great Old Ones. He was essentially a godlike creature who stood at the same level as cosmic beings, and he was known for his monstrous appearance and ability to drive anyone insane with his powerful gaze. Cthulhu was born on the planet Voril in the 23rd Nebula, from which he traveled to the star Zoth. He even had a child on this star, and then he decided to travel to other planets, such as Saturn and Earth, along with his children. After arriving on Earth, Cthulhu settled near the Pacific Ocean and built the city of Earlia. While Cthulhu was creating an empire on Earth, his actions caught the eye of the Elder Things, who also lived on Earth, and they even resisted his plans. Nevertheless, Cthulhu continued with his plans and finally declared war on the planet Earth. After a long war, the two parties came to a truce, and Cthulhu decided to go into hibernation with his entire city. While Cthulhu and Erlia continued to exist on Earth, humanity also evolved, and Cthulhu started communicating with other people through their dreams. He eventually created the Cult of Cthulhu, and followers from all over the world began to join the cult and worship Cthulhu. However, a tragedy struck the city of Erlia after a few years, and the entire city sank into the Pacific Ocean. Cthulhu then settled underwater along with his sunken city, but it must be noted that the city did rise from the ocean from time to time. Moreover, it is said that Erlia is fated to rise to the land permanently at some point in the future, and Cthulhu will then take over the world. In the meantime, he lies dormant beneath the ocean and only influences the world through his psychic powers and cult following. All about the disgusting skin of Cthulhu. Cthulhu had very slippery skin that appeared slimy and grotesque, but it did have its own special abilities. For starters, his skin could repel things even on a molecular level, allowing him immunity from external attacks or effects. His skin also had self-cooling properties and could block heat and radiation. Cthulhu's skin repelled things on such a level that even he could not walk into his secretion. His skin also had some snake-like features and texture. The Deadly Claws and Terrifying Body Structure of Cthulhu Cthulhu appeared as an octopus-like monster with a scaly, rubbery-looking body and razor-sharp claws on his hind and forefeet. His monstrous form was enough to instill fear among all humans, and anyone who crossed his path was bound to tremble as the hairs would stand like icicles on their neck. While Cthulhu's appearance was enough to intimidate his opponents, his sharp claws also served as a weapon that could harm anyone who got in his way. Lovecraft also described Cthulhu as a monster with an anthropoid outline, but with an octopus-like head. He is a gigantic creature who also has dragon-like wings, scaly skin, and sharp claws, but he is also over 100 meters tall, and even looking at him can drive his opponents to insanity. The ancient being can fly and also stay underwater. Cthulhu has the ability to fly with the help of two narrow wings on his back, and he can even survive underwater. After Erlia sank into the ocean, Cthulhu essentially settled underwater and remained dormant for many years in the South Pacific Ocean, proving that he can, in fact, survive underwater. Can Cthulhu reproduce? Despite being genderless, Cthulhu has reproduced in a few instances and has even had some children. Cthulhu has also mated with Idia on the planet Zoth, 
and Idia then gave birth to the star spawn of Cthulhu. These star spawns were also known as the Zothians or Cthulhu and had inherited some of Cthulhu's features. Cthulhu also had a few more sons with Idia, some of whom were Zothomach, Gatanathoa, and Ithagtha. Zothomach had a cone-shaped body with a reptilian head and tentacles, and he also appeared in various short stories centered around the Cthulhu mythos. Ithagtha was Chulu's second child, and he appeared as a huge humanoid frog with one single eye in the center of his forehead that made him stand out among the other monsters. Cthulhu also had a son named Gadanathoa, a twisted deity that later appeared as an antagonist in the Cthulhu mythos. He even had a daughter named Cthulhu, or the secret one, and it was said that Cthulhu could give birth to Cthulhu in case he ever died. Cthulhu also had twin daughters named Nyctolu and Nyctosa, and they both inherited many of their father's abilities, including his ability to shapeshift. The two of them are supposedly imprisoned on the planet Jupiter, but the reason for their arrest is still unknown. Lastly, Cthulhu had a son named Tieth with the elder gods Gatai, but little is known about him or his whereabouts. While there is no information on how exactly Cthulhu reproduces, he has a lot of offspring that establish the fact that he can can reproduce. Can staring at Cthulhu turn someone insane? Cthulhu has the ability to drive anyone to insanity with his stare, and he has deep green eyes that have driven various humans straight to madness. Cthulhu's fatal stare was powerful enough to impact humans even through a picture, and he did not necessarily have to be present at the scene to drive someone mad. Cthulhu can perform mind control. Cthulhu also could contact and control the minds of any entity or human that he desired. He did not have any trouble reaching the thoughts of humans and taking control over their minds, and he could even perform mind control from a distance. When Cthulhu was dormant and sleeping in the Pacific Ocean, he still accessed the minds of humans on Earth and convinced them to do his bidding. The madness among his cult members. Cthulhu also had a widespread cult following, and members of his cult belonged to countries all over the world. He had set up his cult in Arabia, and a few immortal entities led his cult from the mountains of China. Cthulhu's cult members had a mission to awaken the old ones and start an apocalypse on Earth, and they wanted to set the world back to an old age of darkness. According to a few tales, Cthulhu's cult members aimed to bring the world to an age where men drove themselves to insanity and only shouted and killed each other everywhere in the world. Cthulhu was also worshipped by various beings in the Lovecraftian world, ranging from the monstrous Deep Ones to the alien entities known as the Migo. Cthulhu also commanded his star spawns, known as the Zothians, who are essentially considered to be his children. The Zothians also followed Cthulhu's cult and even shared his appearance to some extent. Can Cthulhu be destroyed? Since Cthulhu is essentially a godlike entity, the popular consensus seems to be that he is immortal and can endure just about anything. No regular human can kill him by using any weapons, and there's only a slim chance that even a near omnipotent deity would be able to destroy him. As an unknown force of life, Cthulhu is not affected by concepts such as life and death, and he is merely a being that will continue to exist forever and beyond the laws of regular mortality. Fans also state that the extent of his powers has never been specified across the mythos, making it difficult to know if anything can ever kill him for good. One way of defeating Cthulhu could be by sending him back into his dormant state, where he can't do much harm. This could be done by knocking him out with a powerful object or even ramming him with a huge fishing boat. Another way of destroying Cthulhu would be by pitting his cult against Haster's cult and then starting a war that could destroy this monstrous creature. Cthulhu can also be killed if a higher order entity tried to control his mind or even erase him from time by using a weapon such as the ultimate nullifier. Conclusion To sum it up, Cthulhu was quite an interesting entity, and he had some unique features ranging from his body structure to his ability to control minds. Moreover, Lovecraft's imaginative portrayal of the sea monster established him as one of the most terrifying creatures in Lovecraftian horror. And if you liked our content, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. And in the meantime, have a good one, and be safe. Thank you, everybody.